Hey guys, welcome to the Sunshine Farm. I'm Jen, and this is Junior. Hmm. We're a little rascal. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to care for your farm animals, even in the most severe winter weather, like a winter storm or polar vortex, whatever that means. My husband Chris and I are plant-based modern homesteaders on a little hobby farm in upstate New York. We're doing all of this while working full time and managing a household full of sometimes obnoxious pets. So you're watching a video about preparing for the cold, so it's probably pretty cold outside. So grab a cup of coffee, snuggle up, and join me for the next 10 minutes as I share some lessons we've learned about keeping our animals warm in the winter. things I want to talk to you about today are shelter, hay, and water. So three things I want to keep it simple and make your guys' lives a little bit easier. The first thing is shelter. You want to make sure your animals have a draft-free shelter when the winds come through and the storm rolls in. You might think the worst part about these winter storms is the cold, but oftentimes it's actually the wind that can do the most damage to your animal's health and the structures on your property. So keeping this in mind, you really wanna make sure that your animals have a draft-free shelter. This means an area in the shelter that they can escape the wind and stay warm. Oftentimes a three-sided covered shelter will do just fine, especially if you add in some nice warm straw bedding and you have a few animals that can keep each other warm as they huddle up and snuggle in. <laughs> when you're considering shelter, it's really important that you think about whether or not your shelter is going to be able to withstand strong winds. So if you have a small chicken coop or a small goat shelter, like a pallet built structure, and it's not secured to the ground, it might be a good time to bring your animals into the barn or into a different structure that is more stable. Those things could likely blow over in a strong windstorm, or even the weight of heavy snow sitting on top of the structure could make it collapse. And the last thing you want is to have to worry about your animals being stuck under a collapsed structure in the middle of a storm. I don't know about you guys, but if there's a storm rolling through, the hardest times for me are at night when I'm stuck inside and the world is dark and I can't go check on the animals. I lie in bed in, at night thinking about the what ifs. I just wanna help you guys not have to worry about the what ifs by knowing you're planning things in advance and you don't have to worry about those things going wrong. The second thing, that I wanted to talk about it is feed and hay. The rule with hay is you want hay and more hay, so much hay, all the hay. The animals really need hay when they get really cold. That's how they regulate their body temperature. It's a little different than us. We put on a heavy coat, they eat more hay. <laughs> now some animals might need a heavy blanket like a senior horse or a baby goat. There might be a need for a sweater or blanket in that instance if the temperatures are dropping significantly. Chickens actually do the same thing. They regulate their food intake based on how much they need to warm their body. So in the winter, they're going to eat a lot. And if the temperature drops dramatically, make sure you increase their food intake so that they can do a better job regulating their body temperature. The last thing is water and this is the hardest thing to deal with in the winter especially when the temperatures drop dramatically and you're stuck with frozen water pans and a trough full of ice. It's so frustrating and it's a huge time waster. So there are a few things that we've learned over the past two years that have really helped us out in this area. Now we're fairly used to getting this kind of snow and unpredictable weather here in upstate New York. So I wanted to share some strategies for keeping your animals warm and healthy during a winter storm. Oh, hello. She's going to help me, aren't you? Say hello to our friends, Piper. So you might live in an area where it rarely drops below freezing, but it's always good to have some strategies on hand in case it does to prepare for freezing water bowls and make sure your animals have supply to water that's unfrozen as much as possible. When it comes to having a supply of water, there are a couple things to consider that might help you out that will save your time and your energy. The first thing is having heated water tanks. So the horses have a heated stock tank de-icer and that allows their entire stock tank to be unfrozen so they have constant 
supply of fresh water. The goats, we actually have a heated bucket. It's like a large style bucket. The heater is actually a part of the bucket itself. Personally, I prefer the heaters that can be removed. That way you can use the same watering system throughout the whole year, even if you don't need the heated component of it. I'll link all of these things below so that if you're looking for water heaters or heated buckets that you can find them. Now, if you don't have the option to heat a water bucket or a stock tank, maybe you don't have electricity running to your barn, the next best thing is to just be able to refill whatever you're using for water as much as possible. And I recommend using rubber pans for waters or rubber buckets as opposed to plastic. And the nice thing about rubber is if it freezes, you can just bang it on the ground and the, the ice comes right out. Whereas with plastic, it's much harder to get ice out of. Rubber pans are a huge lifesaver for our chickens because we don't have the option to heat their water. So we're emptying out their rubber buckets multiple times a day to make sure that they have access to water as much as possible. Another thing to consider is that your pipes can freeze when the temperatures drop dramatically. So you really wanna make sure that any pipes running to your barn are safe from, from that happening. We have a heated tape that runs along our spigot to keep the spigot from freezing. And this allows us to be able to have water flowing through the spigot even if temperatures are below freezing. Another thing that we love is we actually have a heated hose. That way we're not having to reattach the hose every time we need to take water from the spigot all the way to the horse trough, for example. So the heated hose really allows us to have the flexibility of doing what we normally do in the summer all through the winter. It can be a bit expensive, it is really worth it, and the company that we've worked with has been really great with customer service. I will link that product below too if you want to see it. The last thing I want to talk about is supplemental heating. I only recommend using heat lamps if they're absolutely necessary because they can be a huge hazard to your barn. I have heard countless stories of people losing their barns in fires due to heat lamps. I even heard a story recently of someone local who lost their brand new barn because of a heat lamp. If you are going to use a heat lamp, there are safer options on the market. We've used the Premier One heating lamp and we loved it. We needed it when, when we had a baby goat born in the middle of winter. It was like four degrees and she was brand new um, and we wanted to be extra cautious. So we did use that heat lamp at that time and we love it. It's much safer because the bulb is set back pretty significantly so that if it did fall to the ground, the heating source would not be touching anything or light hay on fire, for instance. I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it gave you some confidence that you can take care of your animals, even if the weather is freezing cold and you think, what am I going to do? If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel. We are so grateful for those of you who want to be a part of our journey and it's been so fun to have you along the ride. Thanks so much for watching this video. We can't wait till next time.